Wicked Witch, bored with watching snooker on TV, invented a fearsome fandango contraption on which to conduct an experiment. It would change a handsome prince into a wolf and a wolf into a handsome prince. Her meddling caused havoc as the prince started hunting and eating members of the royal families of Europe. And the wolf found himself the sole occupant of a magnificent prince's palace. It was at just this time there lived a merchant banker who had lost his fortune. All he had left was a six-bedroom cottage, a merchant bank, and three daughters who lived with him. The two elder daughters did nothing but grumble. But the youngest daughter, Beauty, never complained and always helped her father in the garden and mucking out the stables. Saddle my horse, will you, Beauty? I've got to go to the office. Could you get me some red roses on the way back? Of course, my dear, he said as he rode off to town. He had a good day at the office and set off home afterwards via a local tavern. Eventually, a little worse from where, he set off to complete his homeward journey. But found himself lost as darkness fell. Then, through the trees, he could glimpse the lights of a palace and decided to seek shelter there for the night. Finding the doors open as he entered, he could smell a wonderful dinner on a table laid up for one. No one seemed to be around, so he sat down and ate away to his heart's content. And later he found a bed. The next morning, he was amazed to find his suit had been pressed, his boots polished, and a copy of his favorite newspaper had been pushed under the door. Even breakfast was ready and waiting on the table. His favorites of kippers and black pudding. Le pudding noir, as the French say. And through the window, he could see bushes of red roses just ready for picking. Perfect, he said. Just what I promised to take back to duty. He was just about to pick a rose when, with an almighty crash, the beast leapt out of the bushes towards him. The beast snarled at the terrified banker. Listen, you. I gave you dinner, bed, a full valley service, the Wall Street Journal, and full English breakfast. And yet, you come and steal my rules? Oh, why won't somebody love me? Please don't be angry, said the banker. These roses are for my daughter, Beauty. Oh? Would she love me? All things are possible, croaked the banker. Okay, then. You promised to bring her back to me, or I'm going to eat you all up. The banker agreed. You could tell your daughter I'm not really a grizzly wolf, but a handsome prince. The wolf explained that he was made to exchange his life with that of a prince by the witch's experiment. That story may take some selling, said the banker. When he arrived home, his daughter came running towards him. Beauty, my dear, I promise you to a prince. My word is my bond, so we must return there immediately. Is he handsome, father? Well, he has, um... 
immaculate teeth and well manicured fingernails. What more do you want? Reassured by this, Beauty packed a few things and off they went back to the palace. When they arrived, they found the table laid up as before, but this time for two. Soup, madam, said a gruff voice from behind her. Oh, you've frightened me. Why does the prince keep a wolf as a butler? Well, well, look at the time. I'm late for the office again, said her father, neatly avoiding the question, and with that he was gone. Poor Beauty was left alone, with only the wolf for company dressed as a butler. Listen, honey lamb, do you love me? Love you? How could I love an ugly beast like you? And I am promised to a prince. Wait a minute, but I am the prince, and I promise I won't hurt you if you are nice to me. I won't even eat you up. Beauty broke down in floods of tears when she realized her situation. Her father had left her and she had no option but to stay with the wolf. True to his word, the wolf spent his days behaving in a most gentle fashion towards her. He even opened a bank account, even gave her archery lessons. One day, she read in the merchant banker's news that her father was very ill. His condition was described as satisfactory. I must go and look after him. If you leave me, you're gonna break my heart. You think he's ill? Wait till you see me when you get back. I couldn't leave you. I realize now that I love you. And with those words, the wolf seemed to change places with the handsome prince. Oh, beauty, you just had to say those three magic words. Together he and beauty returned to her father's house. The banker recovered rapidly and made the prince governor of the Bank of England, which collapsed a few days later.